Yes, it is an intentional trilogy. It all stems from my desire to explore uh, the themes of abandonment, the complexities, um, the dynamics of abandonment. You know, and not just the act of being abandoned, but the experience of not being recognized, of not being accepted for who you are. I think that that's such an inherently human experience. In terms of the aesthetics, it's very striking to look at. So visually, how then is this format that you've chosen conveying those themes of abandonment or isolation? For us, it was very important to, to find uh, um, the compositions, uh, and in this case, even the aspect ratio, that could uh, enhance uh, the sense of suffocation and codependence mm -hmm. um, that uh, is such an important part of, uh, of you know, the inner life of Monica, but also of relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the aspect ratio of this film is actually very square-like. It's like 1.2 to 1. And uh, it's, uh, it's very similar to the aspect ratio of, um, of portrait photography. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, it's one that privileges um, the body and the face over the landscape. And uh, it also allowed us to work a lot with the relationship between what is inside the frame and what is outside of the frame. Uh, and so to, to really uh, allow the spectator to, or to excite the imagination of the spectator by um, often keeping some information or hiding some information. Mm -hmm. I, I want to return to that a bit more when we start talking about the performance a bit more. But for Trace and Patricia, when did you become aware of this project and what made you want to be a part of it? I think I got the script in December of 2016 and then auditioned shortly after that. Um, and it was just a slow boil. I know we talked at length about the script and I gave some notes and um, auditioned some more. And then, and then, yeah, we just decided to do this and then this lovely lady. I had met, um, oh, I was about to use my theater voice, but I'm, I have a microphone. Um, uh, I had met Andrea to, to Marrakesh, and we had talked about working together many years before. And, and um, But then I got this offer. Trace was attached, and he came to me, and um, I... I got a call from my uh, agent saying, you've been offered this Andrea Pallora movie. I said, yes. <laughs> I did. I Didn't I say yes in a day? Yes, it was amazing I because swear. actually you were on your way to LA and then we yes. met at the Chateau. And like, then, right but I said yes basically in a day. And, um, and, and then I, I met this gorgeous woman. It, it's all history. So uh, yeah, I'm very lucky. <laughs> no, we are very lucky. <laughs> So 2016, Trace, is when you first heard about the project. So it obviously took a while to come together. What were some of the, like when you took it out into the world and said, this is the film I'm trying to make, what kind of reaction was there or how, how difficult was it to get financing? We won't get too far into that because it's probably not interesting for everyone. But, but yeah, if you well, want to give us a rough. rundown. I, but on, on we were attached for, what, how, several years. Yeah. yeah, so no, of course. And that's how long uh, it took to find uh, the financing uh, you know, to make it happen, you know, and it's a very low budget film, you know, but still, um, you know, it was a very, very difficult road, uh, but we managed to, to, to make it. And thanks to, to the belief and the support, of course, uh, of our incredible cast of Trace well, and Patty, and Gina but, but and, uh, Ella yeah, and also our producers, who, uh, it, they who are actually here we, we in, uh, in, in, <laughs> in the room, Gina Resnick and uh, Eleonora Granata, yeah. and Christina yeah. Sibo also. Was that lengthy time then an advantage then in terms of building up your characters and getting to know each other and developing mm -hmm. the script further with your cast attached to it? Well, I, I would say ju just one thing about that because I, wh while you are living through you know, the weight, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's excruciating. You know, it's very difficult and it's, it's, it's very debilitating as well. But I have to say that in retrospect, um, it allowed us to get to know one another uh, and to develop a sense of intimacy and trust. So, anyway. Yeah, I guess that was the positive, was that we got to do a lot of dinners 
and notes and dinners and <laughs> a pandemic. <Lots> of dinners. <laughs> you know. Um, and then I think we had a break in the pandemic kind of that summer in Cincinnati. Um, it was really hot in Cincinnati. But I had such a good time because I grew up in Dayton, 45 minutes north. So in a lot of ways, the film was full circle for me. There were so many parallels. Was it was a, a very strong autobiographical aspect to it then? Or was it more... Yeah, I mean, I'm hesitant to use that word because she was definitely a character. I mean, her shell was different from mine. Um, I feel like her family, like you know, where where she grew up, even though it was similar area, it was she grew up under different circumstances than me. Um, so once I had the shell kind of figured out of who she was, the heart was already there because of some of the parallels in her journey and um, just a lot of that was already innate. Um, but it was just figuring out how to deliver that and deliver that with not so much dialogue, which, the, you know, there, there, was no, there was no easy scenes. There was no easy days. It was all really internal and um, trying to get everything across um, when there wasn't always the words to use. Yeah, well, that, that's really what struck me is that um, there isn't a lot of dialogue. I mean, there's scenes with a lot of dialogue, but what people are talking about is not really what the scenes are about necessarily. Um, and I think in that way it subverts conventions in that there's no big drama scene with people breaking down in tears, apologizing or, or doing that kind of stuff. So, so um, but it's all just conveyed beautifully in, I guess, nonverbal aspects of the performance. So as a director and writer, why did you choose to take that approach? What about that mm. particularly appeals to you? Well, I think uh, as, a, as a spectator also of cinema, um, as a cinephile, I, I adore the moments in cinema where you can penetrate in the emotional and psychological inner world of a character. And that often happens uh, without words, just uh, um, observing a character or following them, you know, by themselves, you know, in, in, in a space by themselves. And those are the moments that uh, I've always been drawn to um, and that they come natural to me to, to want to recreate them on the big screen as a filmmaker as well. Um, but that's actually, I think, uh, one of the most extraordinary thing about cinema is, uh, you know, the, the ability to photograph the thoughts, the emotions of a character. I like, you know, I've done so much work and so much work in, in, in this industry. And, um, God, should I just take a break? Uh, anyway, and, uh, but I think with Andrea, it was learning a, a somewhat, a, for me, it was such a challenge. It was a different, a slightly different language in, in cinema for me. And he's such a beautiful and character driven director. And, and tough and specific, but you had to uh, navigate uh, with so few words, and you had to be so present. And it 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 took me on a very different journey than I've had as a, as an actor. And I've had so many and worked with so many directors in this industry, but Andrea brought me to a new place. But I want to go back to quickly to this when we were talking about all the dinners we had. And one of the great things that came out of the dinner was Eugenia had dog, uh, was supposed to have two dogs. But in the process of us having all these dinners, Andrea got to know my dog, Isadora. And one day he goes, Patti, Patti. <laughs> I love easy. Why don't we use easy? <laughs> Because he had gotten to know my dog. My dog was always with me. And, and so that's the, the great thing about this. My beautiful dog ended up in the film. <laughs> well, is that where all the puppies, were the puppies? Well, no. no. Yeah. Where, where, so was there a significance to the puppies? In, or, well, uh, I mean? Of course, you know, like, you know, it's uh, the, 
there are a lot of reasons for it, but but it, re it really uh, ended up being a, a significant uh, um, scene, the one in which, uh, you know, the the nephew, you know, brings uh, the puppy to his yeah. grandmother. You know, like this is new while she is actually dying, and you know she's sick. Yeah. Um, well, going back to what you were saying, Patricia, about sort of getting the the trust and that level of intimacy and almost like learning a new language. Um, Let's talk specifically about the bathtub scene, which is the one that kills me every time I see it. Um, how would you? How did you go about sort of from what was on the page to preparing that scene to then actually delivering the scene? Can you give some insight into that process? Um, I, I, it, um, I, I had that scene in me from the moment I read the script. I knew, but I came to love Trace off the love I have for Trace off camera and the love I have for Monica eventually on camera are one. It's very simple. And we can only create so much as actors. And at some point, we have to just be completely honest with ourselves. And uh, it's about your child is your child is your child. It's about unconventional, un unconditional love. And I, I had unconditional love for Trace. And I just gave it to her on screen. It was, I think, uh, a, 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 as simple as, as that. And, uh, but I was lucky because <laughs> I had um, her, uh, I had a deep emotional connection to her um, from the moment I met, the moment I met, the moment we met each other. Remember, it was at a pre-Emmy party. Oh, wow. And you walked up to me, and I said, oh my God, I'm gonna play this gorgeous woman's mother <laughs> with no makeup and dying. <laughs> Well, Trace, how was that moment for you? Because your character is a bit reticent to sort of even make eye contact in that. So how, what was your process in terms of not wanting to sort of immediately give in to what Patricia was giving you? Uh, well, it was a lot of, it was a really complex emotion. And I don't, I tried not to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It wasn't until I saw it played back that I really understood what what I was feeling. Um, and I think that's for the best because I was really there and in the moment. And it wasn't, um, I, I wasn't trying to like prepackage it or overthink it. Uh, I was just really there with, with Patty. And that's, for me, it's like when you drop into the truth of whatever, whatever character, whatever scene, you know, that's, that's how you make it feel real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Andrea, for you as a director, seeing that happen, do you just back off? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Actually, um, you know, there are some moments uh, in this film where, uh, in the production of this film, in the making of the film, where, you know, I was, I felt in such awe, you know, of what, uh, uh, you know, Patty and Trace were gifting me. You know, like it was like, you know, it's, it's extraordinary as a director when, you know, you are surprised, you're amazed by what your collaborators uh, are doing. Uh, and uh, I have to say that for our whole crew, you know, that's a moment that we will not forget. And we keep talking about it, you know, like uh, it's, uh, it's a moment where like we were all experiencing something together as we were watching them. And... Uh, it was a communal breathing in a way, like, uh, and there was everyone was like just let go, and there were so many people crying, and and it, it was a really extraordinary moment that, that will stay with me forever. So, um, but uh, quickly, we oh, we had an extraordinary crew in Cincinnati, and I I think we should just we yes, always have to course. talk. We had really, I think, one of the best crews I've ever worked with, and again, I've done a lot of work, and. Um, <laughs> And just one of the most remarkable, beautiful crews all the way around. 
we were so, they were so near and dear to all of us, and I think it helped helped get the film made and have this emotional breadth that it had. And it was clear that they were all there because they believed so much in what we were doing. I mean, and no one was being paid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 enough to get by. But <laughs> and it was during COVID as well, is that correct? So you have that adding to the insular or the community nature of it all. Um, so just going back to what you were saying about the framing was very specific of the shots and that, how was it? I mean, did you shoot variations on shots or were you very much like, no, this is what we're doing? No, we, we didn't. Um, you know, and many, many scenes were shot in a single, um, in, in, in a one, one, you know, like it was, uh, it was the language of the film. And uh, I really didn't give myself a lot of options in the editing room. I mean, I knew how I wanted this to be. And uh, we spent a lot of time composing the images. Mm -hmm. You know, like creating meaning through, you know, the the use of lines, uh, through the colors, the light, mm -hmm. but uh, also the, the the bodies. You know how mm -hmm. they play with with one another, mm -hmm. and uh, and of course, you know, allowing the performances to be the guiding point. You know, right. this. So, as as performers, then, did you find that uh, an asset then to know sort of where your boundary was, I guess, visually, or was that? Um, it was challenging. challenging. <laughs> it was challenging. <laughs> it was very specific. Um, but I, when I watched it back, you know, and he, and he explained to me. <laughs> he explained to me. Um, but there were times when I just felt like, I wish I would have known they were on the back of my head as I'm bawling my <laughs> eyes out in the car. Or, you know. But my job is to act. And find the truth, and um, and to trust. So that was a lesson I learned with this. It was kind of, no, I, there were days he was, you know, and and Izzy, I had lift Izzy up, up, get her up. I'm like, well, again, she's not a show dog; she's just my dog. <laughs> I'm like, and you know, there were very, very specific frames, and but suddenly within that framework. You found a release mm -hmm. and a comfort mm -hmm. because the, it was very specific and it was quite freeing, oddly, in, in, in a strange way. Um, and it made sense in terms of the way the story unfolded, well, because the, the relay of information was restricted by the frame, but also everything sort of parceled out very gradually, which I kind of liked in a way. So you're putting together the pieces and, sorry, this isn't really a question, it's just an observation. <laughs> but but I, but I love that way of like the sort of the world opens up as you learn more and more. And I felt like that sort of was a bit like Monica's journey as well. Um, one thing I noticed is that I felt like the real connection, the first real connection Monica had throughout the film was with the children. Um, and that seemed to be one time when uh, the character was really able to just be herself or just express joy with no sort of um, ramifications or, or not being worried about how it was going to cross. Was that um, intentional? Or? Yes, yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, you know, the film ends, uh, you know, with that relationship, you know, like, uh, you know, Monica, like, is looking at her nephew, you know, as a, you know, as a, like maybe one of the most genuine relationships that she has had, but also as a way to look at the future, you know, like maybe with the hope that he might not have to, you know, endure the same difficulties, you know, and, go to, and have the same obstacles that she, mm -hmm. she had. Um, within the context of a society, you know, like the national anthem in that context is, is really like, you know, is to understand how society has... Uh, you know, it's it's ha has a way to actually is one of the main uh, sources of of uh, of uh, our uh, like difficulties in in uh, in or, or in the structure of, of dealing with one another. You know, mm -hmm. um, and this is also a rarity. And it's one of the few films centered on a trans character that's not about the transition process. Um, Trace, how rare was that for you to read a script that was this sort of focus as opposed to 
the actual transition process? Yeah, so rare. I don't even know if I can remember. I, I don't even know if I can remember a film where they center the trans character in the title character and we don't focus on the transition. I mean, there's one scene of me, you know, doing some estrogen in my leg. But other than that, I mean, it's it's about this journey. It's about this family. It's about this kind of linear story with her mom, how much time we have left. Um, I mean, that was probably the thing that grabbed me first was like, oh, the movie's called Monica, and I would be playing Monica if I can if I can land this role, you know. I mean, for me, as a, as a trans actor, it's once in a lifetime. 